going further quickly in our message of tonight, I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, 1 to 3, and then we're going to jump 12 to 23. Exodus, chapter 33, 1 to 3. I'm going to read in the name of Jesus. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm we having the same vision. Okay. Can you keep it a little bit low? Depart and go from here, you and the people from the, the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, the land of which are so to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your descendant, I will give it, and I will send my angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Parasites, and the Ivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on your way, for you are stiff-necked people. Please align that one. Stiff neck people. Meaning you are troubled people. You are stubborn people. Amen? You may sit it. The next, the next uh, 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 chapter verse, I will, I will read it quite a bit long. Twelve to twenty-three. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up the people, but you have not let know whom you will send with me. Yet have said, I know, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray if I have found grace in your sight. Show me now your way that I may know you and I may know you and I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amen. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight Except you go with us. So we shall be separated, your people and I, from the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do these things that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will have compassion to whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is the place by me. And you shall stand on the rock. So I shall be. So it shall be while by my glory passes by. That I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take you. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. As we're going again in this uh, season of ascending in divine speed. I will subtitle this message for tonight. The next level. The reason why I said the next level because ascending is going up. As we go into the what we call the lift, we go up from one level to another. All right? So tonight we're going to take the next level. Back then in 2018, I was coming from um, a job where I was working offshore in Abu Dhabi. Um we were staying on the sea for four, five, six weeks. Quite a quite long time. And that trip, particularly, we stayed there for eight weeks. 
it was exhausted. The day we start selling, going back to, to the show so that we can take flight coming back home, funny enough, it was a very rough sea. We were supposed to sell for eight hours. We end up selling for 12 hours. And being in the boat that is not stable for 12 hours can be double exhausted after staying eight weeks again in that sea. You're standing, you are not stable, you are moving all the way like this. You're sleeping, you are sleeping while moving. Basically, your brain is not stable. So, we get, we get to the show finally around 6. My flight was going to be the next day, um, 6 a.m. as well. As the driver took me, taking me back to my hotel, I received a notification. The notification was an invitation from our own, our uh, client, which is one of the big boss. He was in town, but he just invited us for a dinner. It was, it was a good uh, invitation, but it invited us at 10 p.m. Okay? It was a big opportunity to meet, to meet up with these kind of people because you don't meet them all the time. We get there. I just get to my hotel and I had no normal clothes because for me it was just come off the boats in your airplane, come back home. So I ran quickly to the mall, find some clothes away and all that. Then by 8 o'clock, 10, I'm here by the dinner. First of all, they arrive late. They are the big boss. We have nothing to complain about. We are there. They are eating. They are talking. They are taking their time. 11, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you cannot leave before them. You have to wait until they stand up, then you can go. 2 a.m., that's when they dismiss us. By the time I got to my hotel, it was almost 3, because it was also another, another long, long road drive. My flight is 6 a.m., my driver has to pick me up from the hotel at 4 a.m. So I'm at, I'm at the hotel at 3 a.m. I'm like, if I just take a small nap here, I'm gone. So I just get ready. I just pack my things. When I'm done, I went to the lobby straight away, waiting for my driver. 4 a.m., the driver picked me up, get to the, uh, to the airport, do all the checking around. I went to the lounge where I was waiting for the boarding time. Now, the body had nothing to do with everything you've done. Sometimes it says just to shut down. <laughs> so, as I'm sitting in the lounge, I'm gone. I'm gone, probably snoring. But, as I was sitting there, the boarding time was already on. Everybody was already in the airplane. They start calling my name. They start calling my name. I'm busy sleeping. I don't know what is going around. Thanks be the gods. One of our colleagues, his flight was also in the next couple of hours. It's just the, hey, Jacques, 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 wake up. They're calling you now. Like, if you take more time here, you're losing, you're missing your flight. Pop, 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 run, run quickly. I get there. I was just the last one to get When you get in the airplane, everybody's looking at you like, looks like it's you that we're waiting for. I sit down, relax, and like I'm getting in the closing, the, 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 the door there. So as I'm sitting down, I start reflecting, reflecting. Like, you can be so much exhausted. But the events that you've been going through in the past and you miss out the call that is taking you to your next destination. I mean, I'm not just talking about my flight here. I'm talking about your life where you know yourself how much things you've been going through. How many stuff that you've been enduring. How many things that you've been facing. And you get to the point where you start giving up completely. And you will miss a call 
of God that is going to take you to your next level. Tired of events. Tired of your job that is giving you a headache. Tired of bills that you can't pay anymore. Tired of family that is giving you trouble. But tonight I believe I come with the message of hope. Tonight I believe I come with the message of transformation. I believe I come with the message of twisting your mind to understand that God, no matter what you are going through, he has a next station for you. He has a next level where he want to take you to. Amen? Going to our book that we just read here, Exodus 32, but you understand that it's preceded by Exodus 32. I mean, we, we read uh, Exodus 33, but it preceded by Exodus 32. Obviously, but I'll explain why I have to say this. So Exodus 32 that we did not read, it's a text that explains one of the lowest moments of the children of Israel with the relationship with God. To understand how low they went into their relationship with God, you can go back to chapter 14, where the Lord has brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage from Egypt, after everything that he performed for them. He brought them back on the way. Chapter 15, 16, these people, they were already complaining. It was just two chapters after they've taken them from the bondage that they've been going through. They were already complaining from chapter 16. Going to chapter 19, God took them all the way to chapter 19. God summits, take them to the Mount, 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 um, Mount or, or, or Sinai, what do you call it? The mountain of Sinai. When he brings them there, that's where he starts explaining to them the rules that he wants to establish between him and them in order for them to walk in the way he wants. All right? So this is the place where God starts giving them the Ten Commandments, where he starts establishing the rule of you will not buy, uh, bow before another God, you are not going to do this, you know, all the Ten Commandments that we know. So to make sure that they do not miss out, they do not forget everything that he told them, he took Moses up to the mountain. Moses went there with uh, 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 Joshua and they left Aaron on the bottom with the people. The stiff-necked people, they start pressuring Aaron that Moses is gone for too long. Which God are we going to pray? We don't know any other God here. Under the pressure, Aaron had to end up making a golden calf. They start praying and worshiping this golden calf. God up there with the Moses, busy writing down the laws that you are supposed to give them. And they are busy doing the things that God doesn't want them to do. Then God was like, Moses, look at your people. Look what they are doing. Moses like, God, this is your people. You're the one who told me to bring them here. It's your people. Either way, God was completely angry. And when Moses came down, he found them in the state of worshipping all these other images. Moses gets upset and he dropped the tablet where God has written the messages. When it dropped, the wrath of God also is released. God, get, God gets now double angry to Moses and to the people of Israel. Within that anger of God, God instructed 3,000 Levites who, 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 I mean, he instructed the Levites to kill at least 3,000 people who did not obey the rule of do not worship another God. I mean, the people of Israel become traumatized. They become frustrated. They become under anxious like, hey, anything can happen to us here. They finish this chapter 32. Now we come to chapter 33. 
Now God told Moses, now you guys are going to go to the promised land. How come? If he just disobey you now, we just went out of your way. But the next level, go to your promised land. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter what you're going through. But there is a promise of God upon you. You will not going to do anything about it. Amen. There is a next level upon you. You're going to have to go through because God will take you there. Now, when you look at chapter 32, they fall short of God. Chapter 33, go to the promised land. Chapter 32, they disobey God. Chapter 33, go to the promised land. Chapter 32, they fall, they done everything that God had forbidden them. But chapter 33, go to the promised land. This is to show you that the promise of God are the same. He said, I am not a man that I will lie. Uh, wherever I have said, I will fulfill it. Amen? So, there are three things, few things that I want us to go through this journey of the people of Israel that will help, help us to capitalize and to understand how God wants us to take to take to the next level. Amen? Number one, for those who are writing, I want you to know that your past is not greater than God promises. Whatever it's in your past, it's not greater than God promises over your life. As you understand the movement of this text, chapter 32, they had a bad day, they, had the, they, 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 they go through trauma, but chapter 33, go to the promised land. Everything that has happened in chapter 32, God has shifted the situation of them that now it's time to go to your next level. Now it's time for you to go to your next season. Now it's time for you to go to your next destination because that way I have promised to take you. Amen? Some of us are here. We've, we've, we've had some chapter 32. Some of us here, we've, we've, we've went through some stuff. We've went through, we've endured some things that you cannot even explain to people. But I'm here to tap you on the shoulder waiting for your body coming up and to tell you that your next destination is up. You got to get up. You got to shake off yourself and be ready for your next level. Amen? The things that have taken God to get to this far. It's I took it from Psalm 30, verse 5. The Bible says, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Going today, therefore, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So the things that the children of Israel were going through before they start their journey to the promised land are the weeping that you were going through your life. But joy is coming for you in the morning because the mercy of God does not matter what you've done, does not matter what you've done in front of him, but his mercy is the one that will take you to your next level. Amen. There's, there's this moment I went to a movie with uh, the kids. The kid movie, I, I get there, I fall asleep. <laughs> I don't even remember which movie was that, but uh, when we are out and then I start asking them, which part of the movie that uh, you, you've, you've, you've enjoyed the most? I mean, this one explain, the other one explain. And you know, in the movie, there's this preview that starts always before uh, 
they start the, the normal movie. They're showing this the other movie coming up next in a few weeks. And few. Then the boy, he was still a little bit more younger than now. All he told me is like, Sing 2 is coming up. And I'm like, boy, we just sat more than two hours in the movie. The only thing that you understand now is Sing 2, they say, preview that you saw coming up next. Sometimes you need to understand that the things that are coming next are more interesting for you that you are not interested in the things that you are going through. Somebody needs to understand that what is coming up next, what is coming in the next destination, what is coming in the next season is far much greater than what you are going through right now. Hallelujah. Secondly, we got to pursue God's presence like never before. When you want to take us to the next level, when God want to take us to our next season, we need to, to, to seek for his presence like never before. Your devotion, your, your, your commitment needs to upgrade to a different level for you to get to the next level. Moses, Moses was a bit worried because God told him, I'm, 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 can you please uh, keep it a little bit low? Moses was a bit worried because God told him, I, I'm going to send you to the promised land, but I'm not going to go with you because you are stubborn people. What's the word again? Sensitive people, yeah? You, you, these people, because the way you are stubborn, if I go with you, I'm going to end up wiping you out, all of you. So I, I'm going to send angels that will take care of you. Moses was like, no, 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 God, come on. This, this is not what I've agreed with you. This is not what I've signed up for. And Moses was like, if you do not go with us, do not send us from here. If you don't go with us, the defeat is inevitable. If you don't go with us, God, our management is not going to work. If God does not go with us in this church, we're not going to make it anyway. If God does not take us with, with, with him, we're not going to enjoy anything anymore. Amen? So Moses understood very well that the presence of God is inevitable. Is not negotiable. This is the guy that end up convincing God, changing his mind. Because God end up saying, okay, I will go with you. Amen? So, Moses have learned this. That I cannot do it without your presence. So, I hope somebody tonight understand that for you to go to your next season, for you to go to your next greatness position, you need to seek the presence of God because it's the presence of God that will take you to whatever level you want to go to. Amen? Because himself, he said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Number three, we got to recognize the glory of God. Because sometimes God is doing things and all we do is just, okay, we find it normal because for us it's normal. Moses tells God, okay, show me your glory. Show me, show me what you are capable of, God. Because now and then we, we, we we behave in that position like, God, I've, I'm praying for this. You need to show me that you exist. You need to show me that you are there. Okay? But God said to Moses, no. God denied the glimpse of his glory to Moses. Do you understand that God can say no sometimes? Do you understand that it's not everything that you pray for, you will get it? But 
Why? Why did God say no to Moses? Because this was his friend. Now he's like, come God, show me your glory. Part of the answer that I understand is Moses was still doubting. He wasn't sure that after God said he's not going to go with us, now I just want to make sure that he will really go with us. So I want to see his glory so that it can be as proof of his presence. Amen? He's been arguing that I won't go with him. But at the moment God said, okay, I'm not going to show you my glory. I'm not going to show you my glory because you are sin. Your face is sinful and my presence is holy. And if I come in your presence, nobody can see me. If you see me, you will die. Because your sin cannot interact with my holy face. Because you will die. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I may not show you my glory, but I'm going to set you on the rock. For some of us who understand the language of rock in the Bible is the language of God setting you up in a position of stability no matter the storm that will come around you. The Bible says, He shall set me up upon the rock. That means God will take all the necessary measure of safety, of security in the presence of the enemy around you. He set my feet upon the solid ground. God said he will put on the place of safety. He will put you on the place of stability. He will put on the place of security. Amen. When the, 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 the singer says, I build my house on the solid rock. Come on choir. That means rain come, wind blew, yet did not fall because I am on the solid foundation. Amen. And on the Christ, on the, Christ the solid rock I stand. I will not be shaken. What is this, this setting you on the rock? That means it may not give you what you want. It may not give you the promotion you want at work. It may not even heal you the sickness that you want him to heal. But God is going to put you in a certain position that if an evil wind broke loose against you, you will not be shaken. It will keep you in the same state of mind. It will keep you healthy. No matter what you are going through, it will find you in a position where it will put you on the rock. You will not be shaken no matter what comes around you. All the winds on the east, on the south, and the west and east will not shake you at all because you are on the solid foundation. Amen. So the problem is God said, Moses, you are sinful. My glory is holy. Now, this is what I'm going to do. There's a cleft on the rock. There's a space on the rock where I'm going to put you. And when I put you in that cleft, I will put my end. What I say? I will cover you with my end so that my holiness does not kill you. Because not only that I keep you, I will also cover you. How many of us, God, have covered our mistakes? How many times we've done things that's the underground, but God still cover it? Because he's holy in his presence, he will just going to cover it. He will protect you, he will not going to expose you. Amen? Then he said to Moses, you need to know, I want you to know that I'm real. Even if you are trying to set me up to, to, to convince yourself that I'm still with you, but I'm still going to show you that I'm real. As I'm putting you on that cliff, 
as I'm covering you with my hands, I'm going to make my goodness pass by. Once my goodness pass by, then I will take off my hands and you will know I've been there. This is where God is trying to show Moses that I have been there. But you don't even realize that I've been there. I'm going to pass by and when my end, I take off my end of you, when you open your eyes, you look around you, you're going to see that my presence has been there with you. When you wake up tomorrow morning in your house, you look into your house, you ask yourself, which kind of house am I living in? You will know that God has been there. When you are holding the title deed of your new dream house and you look at yourself and you, you can't believe that you are holding a title deed, you know that God has been there. When you are carrying a miracle baby, I know you are carrying your baby, you will know that you understand that God has been there. When you pray for your child and tomorrow is here testifying how he received Jesus, you know that God has been there. Or when you're in a car accident and then you take yourself out, nothing is missing, nothing is broken. Oh, and by the way, it was a setup for you to upgrade to a level level. You need to understand that God has been there. Mama, when you drive to the church here and you see the wandering ball all rising up like a mushroom, you understand that God has been there. He has been around all this time. He has been there for us all this time. We are realizing that God has been around. He's in His presence. He's going with us. He's doing things that you not even notice. He's accomplishing things that you're not even are grateful for. God has been around all this time. And He's taking you to your next level. Amen. Your next destination is with God. Not only I will keep you. Not only I will cover you. I will bless you. Now when you look, when I take off my hands, you will see my back. Amen? When you open your eyes, you won't see my face, but you will see my back. Why God want Moses to see his back? Because God is telling that, I'm not taking you where you're coming from. I'm taking you to where you are going. Because where you are going into the greater place. Where you are going into your next level. I am not taking you to where you are coming from. You need to follow me from your back, from my back. So that I can take you to the next destination. So that I can take you to your next level. Your next level of glory. Your next level of victory. Your next level of prosperity. Your next level of greatness. The God is taking us to our next level. When coming January 14, be ready. Be ready for your next level. Be ready for next level, Rama Church. Be ready for the next level, Pastor Galal. Come up. Be ready for this ministry. You're gonna see a different level of this ministry. God of this, God of Pastor Galal, come up. He's gonna take us to a different level in different dimension. People will grow, will grow up greatness. People will take things to a different level. Amen. Please let's send our feet.